God has set up the fivefold ministry for the intention of perfecting the saints for the work of the ministry. Praise the Lord. When you find an altar that tells you the truth, stay there. Amen. When you find an altar that teaches the word of God as is, because you also have a Bible in your hand. <laughs> you know, long time before the Bible was everywhere. Anything they say, you say is what God said. Because the Bible was not in the hand of people. And they, they began to rebel. And they collected the first Bible and it was printed and it began to spread and everybody discovered. You people are telling us what is not there and how it is not supposed to be. And then the rebellion of, that brought about Pentecostalism started. Praise the Lord. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 55, verse 8 and 9. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are my ways your ways, hear the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Praise God. That means a man cannot attain to the reasoning of God. When a man has to decide to do one thing or do two things, by the time he says one thing can handle three things, it, it, it feels that he's walking in super wisdom. Meanwhile, God will do one thing and he will serve millions at the same time. The Bible says, once have I spoken, twice have I heard. The power belongs to God. God will be speaking by one mouth and everybody will be hearing concerning their matter. That's what happens in church. Somebody came here with a question, God, I'm being offered another job and I have this job. Do I go? Do I not go? Somebody else is asking, is that man my husband or not? Or is that my wife or not? Do I enter into this business or not? Lord, is, are you telling me this is my church? If you're a first time out, you're coming for the second time. And you say, Lord, everybody has something they're asking from God. And when we come to the house of God, we come to the mountain of voices. And we come when we gather together. And when the church fasted and gathered together in the day of Jehoshaphat, and the spirit of the Lord rested upon his servant, and the voice of the Lord was heard by everybody. And the solution to the challenge of an entire country was delivered and everybody heard. Praise the Lord. So the wisdom of God is not something you can break down in your head. God's servant standing here teaching us said, the word of God is not for debate, it's for obedience, it's for compliance. Praise the Lord. It is for compliance. So the thoughts of God are very high. You can imagine as far as the east is from the west. You know that is infinity. As far as the heavens are from the earth, there is no distance in meters. So it is a far distance and therefore it says, it is simply we are not in the same class. And God said, God, the scriptures tell us, God is not a man. Praise the Lord. So when God gives us instruction on what ought to be, it is not in our place to debate that word. God, if you say, I dip myself in the Jordan seven times. Of course, Naaman reasoned this thing and he took it to whichever level he wanted. And the lady told her, just comply. The wisdom of God is too much. He was a soldier. It would have been worse if he was a medical doctor. Isn't it? Because the complication of what water can do to leprosy. You know, that, that issue in his head would have made him look at that man and he said, you see, you see, you guys, you are not educated, you men of God. You don't know how things happen. But the wisdom of God is so far beyond. When God spoke once like that, water that you think does not have healing power, woke up. 
And as he entered there, the water that created birds and created uh, whales rose up as a creative force of the beginning of beginnings. And it removed what was not there and returned to being H2O. Praise the Lord. So the wisdom of God is far above our reasoning. So when we find instruction in scripture, ours is to hear and to comply. Do you know something? God will meet you at his demand, not your demand. He will meet you at, in his terms, not your terms. Just, just how it is. You can't come and give God terms of how a son of God is to experience his work with his father or his God. God will tell you how it works. For our part is to comply. Glory to God. We are in our month of season, let me call it season, not a month, of wealth empowerment. And I'm going to be teaching on something very dicey. And I pray that the Holy Ghost who is inside you will minister to you the authenticity and the truth of what you're hearing. Praise the Lord. I'm going to be talking about the believer's financial obligation to the servant of God. The believers, you can write the believer's obligation to the servants of God's provision, or the believer's financial obligation to the servant of God. God is so great that he does he cannot create as man of God and drop him on the earth he does not he comes into families to the children you and me bear and he points at one or points at two and he says I pick you for my service praise God and the son that you gave birth to begins to move in the spirit in ways you can't imagine, you want to ask yourself, were you in my womb or is, that, is it another one? Or did they change you when I was delivering? Because you can't imagine what happens to your son or our son when God picks them and says, I have a mission for you. You will advance the kingdom. I now lift you above other men. I anoint you. I will be with your mouth. I will confirm the word that you speak. You will do this and this assignment for me. And God releases servants in our midst. Praise God. They are special vessels. Special because God picked them. God called them. They are not special from birth. Are, you, are we together? They are not special in body, soul, or spirit. They are our children. That God picks and decides to place his hand over them. And pour his oil into them. And commission them. And by that privilege, God raises them. And the child that you carried in your arms becomes the one that lays hand on you in the day of challenge and you are delivered. Praise the Lord. He commands the negative in your life to live and it lives. He stops the devil on his tracks in your life and he has not overtaken you in age. Praise God. They are special vessels of God sent by God to us for us. Amen. Sent by God to us for us. Men of God don't appear when there is no need. They appear because God has seen a need in people and he sends them. Glory to God. God has raised this altar 
for the purposes of transformation. God said, I want an altar that I can use to transform men. And if you want to understand what transformation is, just know that a caterpillar turns to a butterfly. That is what is called transformation. If you don't get that one, go and look for a cartoon called Transformers. <laughs> Amen. You will see a car becoming a person. A lorry becoming something else. Amen. It is driving and then it suddenly runs like this and stands like a person and is talking. That is transformation. Praise God. That is transformation. That is what this ministry is about. That is what? That is the mantle on this ministry and the mantle upon his servant. Glory to God. Servants of God are specially engraced to meet the needs of the ones they are sent to. They have give, been given graces, anointings, giftings, especially because of the needs that the people that they are going to meet are going to have according to the mandate that they carry. Those are the servants of God. They are literally packaged when at the point of calling and ordination, they are literally packaged by God at that particular time to specially fulfill a work on this earth. Every man of God is doing the Great Commission. Everyone has a share, a percentage of the Great Commission. There is no other ministry. It's only the Great Commission to reach in out to people. Can reach out to people in special ways, by special graces, by special anointings. Glory to God. What I said about them being called for you is in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11 to 15. And he gave them apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and some teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Till we all come in the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God and to a perfect man. They are sent to you for your perfection perfecting of your life for the work of the ministry praise the lord they are sent to prepare you to mold you to form you to assume your place in destiny so that you will succeed in that ministry god has given you because ministry is fulfilling divine vision i am fulfilling divine vision my divine vision is what i am doing right now as a servant of god your divine vision could be business. Amen. It could be the career that you're in. God says, stay here. And while you're here, I will use you in this and this way for the advancement of my kingdom on the earth. So God is the one who gave them to us. These personalities that we call servants of God, I don't want to use the name man of God. I just want to use servant of God so that you understand. They are called to service. They are called to service. And you can recognize a man serving you. Amen. You can recognize that. It's not something that uh, uh, is, you need somebody to explain to you. You know that they serve you. They are doing all they can do to service your needs spiritually. They are called to live a life of sacrifice. Do you know that? Why? Because they too are like, human, like, like all other human beings. Have things they would have wanted to do in life. Have a direction probably they were already going before God called them. Some are called as kids. Some are called as adults, even as young people. They have a direction which they were going and the Lord comes and says, my son, I need you. From now go this direction. They are called to a life of sacrifice. And inside that sacrificial life, God has commanded their provision. Praise the Lord. Deuteronomy 12, 12. Let me just read the scripture. Ye shall rejoice before the Lord your God. Ye and your sons and your daughters and your men servants, and your maids, and there are no amens. 
I say amen to all that. I repeat again, and ye shall rejoice before the Lord your God. Ye and your sons, and your daughters, and your men servants, and your maid servants, and the liver that is within your gates. For as much as he has no part nor inheritance with you, also before before they burnt the fat. Okay, sorry, in Isaiah, First Samuel chapter 2, verse 15. Also before they burnt the fat, the priests servant came and said to the man that sacrificed give flesh to roast for the priests for he will not have sudden flesh of thee but raw praise the lord inside this whole mystery of men walking in destiny god picks our children yours and mine sets them apart and tells them ambitions have gone you are mine now you serve me meaning you push my agenda you 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 advance my interests when he picks them out and they are not in business do you understand they god organized that within that system there is how they will be provided for glory to god That provision was to come through the ones that partake of their ministry. Glory to God. This matter becomes dicey because people fail to use Isaiah 55 11. My ways are higher than your ways, my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. Excessive reasoning of the matter makes a man lose direction on it. People sometimes are, in fact, parents are here. You have children that are in school or are in school. If your child is not delivering or you want, him to, you want to push him to a higher level academically, what do we do? We hire teachers. Isn't it? And we pay good money for these children to be trained up to the next level. You want to lose weight. You pay in a gym or pay a trainer to train you down, to train your weight down. Isn't it? You pay them. And you pay them handsomely. Yet there are those that teach you and train you and shape you and put you on the right track spiritually and your hand turns back to his pocket and stays there are we seeing that if a motivational speaker comes to this city and he says he's charging seven thousand for a session depending on his name he can even say 10 he can even say 15 he can even say 25 Depending on his name, people will voluntarily go into their pocket and pay 25000 to sit and hear him teach. Yet for years, you will sit in the house of God and receive tremendous teaching that has moved you from one place to the next place. And the same response does not happen in your heart. So we embrace the carnal version of it. The spiritual one is not, is something we reason out. We don't reason out when our children are not doing well. We take them to school. In fact, we move them school from school, isn't it? We take them from this school to the next. If that school is, looks like there's something funny with it, they are moved again. They go for tuition, they go for everything. Praise the Lord. God delights in you walking in obedience to his call to minister and support or provide for the men of God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 
the Levite had no inheritance. Hey, I'm taking you to Canaan land. The land of the Canaanites, Evites, and Jebusites, and everybody. He said, you are taking that land as a possession. And he said, Joshua, you are the one who will divide this possession to the entire family called the church. But he said, this, there were 12. This 11 family called the Levites will have no inheritance in that land. The, when things are being divided, when they, when they, as they call it, the cake, yeah? when the cake, when the goodness and the fatness of the land is being given to you, it will not be given to them. For they will not be allowed to do what you do. Are we together? Since they will not own land, they will not have farms, they are not going to set up you know, businesses. They are not going to be trading with other nations because I have called them to myself to serve to the service of my altar and my temple. They will have, they don't have those things. So because they don't have those things, as you go to war and you gather spoil, you will gather for yourself and they will also have their portion. Praise the Lord. So an instruction was given to Israel that when sacrifices are brought, when they come, a portion of those sacrifices, of those offerings, that's what they used to call everything, sacrifice. If, you know, we have, you know, peace, peace offering, all those things. They were all sacrificed because it's an animal that is killed. As they bring those offerings, they said a portion of it was taken to service the Levites, the rest was used in worship. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That was not, and you will allow me to say this respectfully, it was not an opinion, it was not a suggestion of God, it was the rule of the day. Praise the Lord. It was the rule of the day. That is how it was done. Praise the Lord. Let me ask a question. Don't answer me. If up to this time, the servants that have been used by God to feed you from daddy on downwards, to minister to your life spiritually, to minister to your spiritual needs, if these servants were to depend on what you have given to them already, would they still be clothed? Will they still be eating? Will their families be sustained? Don't answer. <laughs> Just think about it. Now think about it as yourself. Would they be sustained? Will they be clothed? Will they be fed? Or are they hungry? Or are they unclothed? Why? Because they are, they are not allowed to run out and do other things. Praise the Lord. And you have seen that in this house. Praise the living God. Our father is not a businessman. Mommy is not a businessman. We are not businessmen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So what does the word say? Let's look at the word. What does the word say? In 1 Corinthians 9.14. Even so has the Lord ordained, meaning set a system in motion, that they which preach the gospel should leave off the gospel. It was ordained. It is a set course of spiritual life. It is a set system that they which preach the gospel leave off it. Amen. That means those that preach the gospel are financially provided for by that preaching of the gospel. They are materially provided for by the preaching of that gospel. They are literally fed, as in food, by the preaching of that gospel. The Bible says they live off it, meaning all things are, are catered by live preaching 
of that God. They live off the preaching of the gospel. But in that scripture, it doesn't say how they live off of it. But it says they live off of it. Praise God. In 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 17. 1 Timothy 5, 17. Let the elders, which are the leaders of the church, it's talking about pastors. That rule will be counted worthy of double honor. That means ample honorarium. Especially they who labor in the word and doctrine. In the Amplified Bible it says, The elders who perform their leadership duties well are to be considered worthy of double honor, which is in bracket financial support. Especially those who work hard at preaching and teaching the word of God concerning eternal salvation through Christ. Praise the Lord. It means they are worthy of double honor. Doing it is, an hon is honoring them. That's what the Bible says. They deserve that honor. Glory to God. And that means, therefore, that ministering to them materially and financially is honoring them. Praise the Lord. It is a thing of honor, therefore, to minister to them. Galatians chapter 6, verse 6 to 10. Galatians chapter 6, verse 6 to 10. Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teacheth in good things, in all good things. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall reap shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap everlasting life everlasting. And let not, let us not be weary in well doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Verse 10, as we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. Those scriptures talk about giving. Praise God. And they begin by talking about the people that receive teaching that they should communicate to the ones that teach in all good things. In all good things. It says all good things. Do not be weary in doing this. Praise the Lord. Do not get tired. The amens have disappeared, but God is still God. <laughs> Amen. The Bible says in due season you shall reap. Meaning what? A covenant has been enacted there. If you fulfill this, I promise you, in due season I will deliver. That's what God is saying. So he says, let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teacheth all in all good things. Praise the Lord. 1 Timothy chapter 5 verse 18. For the scripture saith, Thou shalt not muzzle the ox that treadeth out the corn, and the laborer is worthy of his reward. The laborer is worthy of reward. He is meant to eat, like we said in the first scripture, he is meant to eat off the ministry, off the, this ministry God has given you, the preaching of the gospel. I'm trying to give you an understanding why you will never see ropes being sold here. No broom will be sold here. No padlock will be sold here. No anointing oil will be sold here. Appointments are not for sale. No gimmicks are being used to corner money out of people. There is no, if you have ever gone to daddy's office or come to my office or seen any pastor and he told you go and come with money. And I'll pray for you, this thing will go. Lift up your hand. Never done, isn't it? Never done. Because we believe in what the word says. We believe in standing with the word as a minister, as a servant of God, as a prophet, as a pastor. You stay in that call. 
and the man of God and the people of God stay in their part and in their place. Glory to God. So don't close up. That's what he says. Don't muzzle the ox that treads the corn. You don't take, you know those days, an ox would grind maize or any grain. They will have a grinding stone here, put something up and then another like this. You tie or yoke the, the cow there or the bull and then it goes around like this. While it goes around, this stone is grinding. Now you can't keep an ox in that place from morning to evening. It does not go to grace and you refuse that it eat. You are supposed to remove. Don't muzzle it. Leave it. When it stops, let it eat the grain that it is grinding. Because it does not go out. That's what it says. Don't muzzle the ox that is treading the corn. Don't hold. Don't close up. Matthew chapter 10 verse 41 to 42. Matthew chapter 10 verse 41 to 42. He that receiveth a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. And he that receiveth a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. Whosoever, so that we don't misunderstand what is being said, whosoever shall give to drink unto one of these little ones a cup of cold water only in the name of a disciple, verily I say unto you, the Most High, the Creator of the heavens and the earth, he shall in no wise lose his reward. God is saying, if you water them, I take responsibility of rewarding you. Amen. If you water them, I take responsibility of rewarding you for doing that. If you receive him as a prophet, because I am the one who called him a prophet. He didn't call himself a prophet. He didn't call himself a pastor, an apostle, an evangelist, a teacher. I called him. If you receive him as I made him, I take the responsibility to reward you for watering him and you understand what watering is he's not a plant amen <laughs> glory to god Hallelujah. first corinthians chapter 9 verse 11 if we have sown unto you spiritual things is it a great thing if we shall reap your carnal things that's paul speaking if we have ministered to you spiritual things, is it a great thing if we shall reap your carnal things? Is it a big deal that you respond back with carnal things? Of course, carnal things are non-spiritual things. You understand? All those things that are considered to be provision to a person are the ones that he's talking about. When spiritual things are sown, when spiritual impact has happened in your life you understand you are obligated by scripture to minister kind of things you say is it wrong we have been sowing into your life is it wrong that we reap from you no it's not wrong that's what he was asking Malachi chapter 3 verse 10 the famous scripture that we all know bring you all the ties into this storehouse that there may be provision in my house and prove me now here with say the Lord of hosts if I will not open to you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it he said those tithes that you take they used to carry them in bags and convert to money and take to Shiloh when they went once a year those things you are taking the cows the donkeys the flour the grain the everything is to make provision in the temple and the provision is for the work and the workers praise the Lord that's how I get a salary. Amen. That's how I get a salary. Because it comes to the storehouse and out of the storehouse, provision is made for the work and the worker. Glory to God. It's not, it's not split like this. How many are we? <laughs> you understand? No, you, you are on a salary. Even daddy is on a salary. Amen. Mom is on a salary. It's not that... Uh, how much is it? You carry like this? No. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. We are super trained. What is God's is God's. What God has said should be yours is yours. Praise the Lord. So it says, bring them. So failing to tithe, failing to, re to re give offerings is refusing to make provision 
in the storehouse. And that way you make provision lack. So God says, as you minister basically, as you minister to my servants, to the ministry, I open your heavens. I rebuke the devourer. That's what he says. Luke chapter 8 verse 1 to 3. See it in the life of Jesus. And it came to pass after that that he went throughout every city and village preaching and showing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God. And the twelve were with him. And certain women which had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities. Mary called Magdalene out of whom went seven devils. And Joanna the wife of Chusa, Herod Steward and Susanna and many others. Which ministered unto him of their substance. Praise God minister to him not to the ministry you understand they made provi out of their substance jesus was not a business person he had nowhere to get income per se so what they had they ministered to him and that is what that is how he lived those that while that he was there they ministered to them and it was clear of their substance glory to god i said glory to god So in that scripture, we see that God has given you a ministry to his servants' welfare. Do you understand that? This is how you stop. This is how you help. Let me put it this way. This is what has caused those guys to sell oil. Do you understand? To sell appointments. To sell all these things. To sell padlocks and, and ropes and, and ministrations of all kinds. You understand? They give brooms. That you go and sweep your house and the devil has left. How much is that broom and how much did you buy it? They tell you they have holy water. Do you know how much water is? 120 liter is how many? 20 bob. That 20 bob can fill small bottles like this. That you buy for 300. By the time everybody buys that 20 liters, you know how much profit has been made. It is carnality. It's carnality brought by evil thinking and it is also brought because the church refuses to take its place. Praise the Lord. Philippians chapter 4 verse 17. Not because I desire a gift, but I desire that, it, that fruit may abound to your account. But I, ha I have all and abound. I am full, having received from Epaphroditus the things which were sent from you, an odor of a sweet smell, a sacrifice, acceptable, well-pleasing unto God. He said they provided and provided fully for him. And they said, it is not that I actually was in need. I, I, am, I am in abundance. That's what he was saying. I abound. It's not that I needed your gift, but I received it because I want it to add to your account. Because God keeps record. Remember what God said. Receive them as I send them as prophets. God will make sure he rewards you. So definitely it, it's noted by God and a reward comes. Glory to God. He said a worthy gift. A worthy gift. He said it is recorded in your favor. It is recorded in your account and it is recorded in your favor. Glory to God. It is not because of poverty that men flow and flow for the welfare of those that teach them the word. It is so that, you know, there may, there may be a, an abundance in your account with God. Praise the Lord. It is not poverty that is making me talk. Do you understand? It is not poverty. Glory to God. God's servant is not poor either, is it? No. It is an injunction. If um, we won't fly all over the world trading in goods and services, where would the provision therefore come from? It comes from the givings of the people, from the tithes and the offerings and the direct ministrations to those that minister to you. Praise the living God. I say praise the living God. And into whosoever's house ye enter first, say, Peace be unto this house. And if the son of peace be there, your peace shall rest upon it. 
If not, it shall return to you again. And in the same house remain, eating and drinking such things as they give. For the laborer is worthy of his hire. He says, I'm the one who sent you. When you arrive where you are going, you are going to find a believer. That's how he's saying. And that believer will meet your provisions while you are in that city. Why? Because you are my laborer and you are worthy of hire. So God organizes how that provision will be made. Arise, get down to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon. Dwell there, I have commanded a widow to provide for you. There is a house, there is provision. And as we go down like that, we find him finding a noble woman who recognizes, I perceive this is a man of God. Talks to the husband, builds a house for that man of God. Why? Because where will he get? He's not a businessman. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Amen. So they are God's hired servants and God has said they will be paid. And what he does is that he places a blessing on what you will give to you. And by doing that, inspiration comes to your heart to do the same. And that becomes provision for him. Glory to God. By those two few scriptures, I hope you have seen that scripture says it's an obligation. An obligation. That we financially make provision for those who minister to you spiritually. Those who are impacting you spiritually. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Amen. Church of God, any altar where you do not hear truth, don't go there. Do you understand? Yes. That which has been spoken to you is truth. If the Holy Ghost is in you, he will authenticate what I have just said to you. Glory to God. And on, when, when a people and children are wanting in character and in behavior, they are trained into it. Do you understand that? Yes. Praise the Lord. We love you and God's servant loves you. Amen. With all their heart. And when he stands here to speak the truth that sounds, feels like a blade, is not because of anything. It's just to train you up. Train up a child in the way he should go and he will not depart from it when he grows up. Praise the living God. In my little journey, and I say this before God, I told you, me, I don't impress people. I have a mission to make heaven. Period. I live ready 24-7. <laughs> When I sleep like this, I sleep with peace. Amen. Because my mission is to make it. Those chariots come suddenly. Ask Elisha. You will see. Fia. They come and just separated them. And before he knew it, Elijah was not in the earthly realm anymore. Praise God. But we will live long in Jesus' name. I will not say things to lie to you. I've been a pastor for seven years now. God's servant is multiples of me now. <laughs> But in my little journey, every place I have gone in, our, in this beloved country of ours, I found very few people who understand what I've just spoke to, spoken today. Find very few. In our motherland, you know where our motherland is? Yeah? You know where our motherland is? The training has been thorough. Praise the Lord. The training has been very thorough. That if I tell you the truth before God Almighty and His holy angels, the greatest blessings I have ever received came from non-Kenyans. Not here only. I'm talking about everywhere I have been. Praise the Lord. I don't understand why. Okay? I don't know why we do that. I don't know why. I don't know if it's because we have been disappointed by men of God before. Until we have gotten to a place. I do not know. But whether it is that or not that. Let Transformers Chapel be different. Amen. I didn't hear better. Amen. Amen. Let Transformers Chapel be different. Amen. Glory to God. 
I am not supposed to receive from my senior. Do you know that? Because oil flows from the head to the toe. That is how it works. We are, not tra we are trained to give upwards, not downwards. Do we understand? That's how we are trained. And that's what scripture says. But do you know, God's servants have has been a blessing to me. Of course, I flew out. Amen. I flew out too, as God allows me. You see this suit I'm wearing? This is a gift from Pastor Kobe. I have two suits from him. He is not supposed to flow downwards. I almost didn't take them. You understand? Because something happened when I went to the US. I put my money in the card. They went and the systems were not working with my card. I don't know whether they flag African credit cards or debit cards or what. That's what happened. So my money got stuck. The little cash I had could not do much. So I couldn't minister to him because I'm, I'm attending services every single day. You understand? And I can't appear there and, and hold my head. Okay? One time I took offering in the church. What if I had not prepared for offering for that time? Glory to God. Praise God. But I made up my mind I will pray for him. Amen. I said what I couldn't give you in finance, I'll give you spiritually. And I pray. Glory to God. I pray as an obligation. Glory to God. But the next time I will leave, that blunder I made will not be there. Praise the Lord. Uh, because when I was going, the thing had been planned. How it was going to be. Praise the Lord. Let us respond to the word. Not respond to pastor. Don't respond to what I said. Respond to the scriptures you have written. Glory to God. It is supposed to be an abomination. For those that minister to you. To suffer lack. Amen. It's supposed to be an abomination. It's supposed to be an abomination. People are not supposed to be laughing. And say and he calls himself a pastor. And he has been in the dark for three days. Can't put tokens. <laughs> you understand? It's never meant to be like that. Glory to God. I have just spoken into your heart. I did not preach. We have a financial obligation to those who minister to us spiritually. Let's wake up to it. It is a mystery. Now this is how it works. When the father, Jacob, wanted to leave and the time was up, he said, go and prepare me venison, isn't it? Go and prepare me venison. Because I'm seeing that I will go anytime. I want to use this opportunity now that I know I have strength, a little strength, to bless you. And when venison was brought, you know what venison means? They brought the most favorite dish that he likes. Was cooked exactly the way he likes. That's what it means by venison. It was picked, prepared, a thing that when reaches Jacob like this, Jacob's heart will be stirred to flow out. Glory to God. And honestly, that is what happens when blessing is released. The person that gave me a car, the day he gave me that Mercedes, I told him I will not pray for you. Give me time. Because I was overwhelmed. I didn't know what to do. I said, wait, I'll call you for prayer. <laughs> he said, I can't pray now. I will call you. And indeed, a time came and I called him. And I prayed. And he reminded me of a prayer. I prayed for him when he was on his feet. Walking on his feet, looking for people to print business cards. And he reminded me one day that I prophesied over his life. And he reminded me. And he said, it is working for me right now. And that is why I responded this way. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'd like, I'm happy to tell you that that person was Akikuyu. Ah, not Akikuyu, sorry, a Kenyan. <laughs> Forgive me. Forgive me. <laughs> That's not what I meant. I wanted to say a Kenyan. Praise the Lord. And he was a member of this church when I was on the other side. Glory to God. Make it a point. The way you plan to pay rent and things like those. Think what you can be doing and do it.
plan it the way you will plan it. But don't let January to December go. Don't let months pass. Don't let weeks pass. And it's like you care less what happens. You understand? Don't be like that. God bless you in Jesus' mighty name. Hope you enjoyed, touched, and blessed to your next level. Worship with us at Transformers Chapel. We are situated on Kilimani Road, Elsie Plaza, off Eligeo Maraquet, Adams Arcade Roundabout. Visit us on our website, www.transformerschapel.org, or our Facebook page, Transformers Chapel, Nairobi. Mm -hmm.